Hello everyone, Sonley here and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock Season 1. Today we're going to be doing something quite fun and a little bit different from what we normally do. We are going to be making ourselves a brand new mini game in the gaming district. And like, by the way, we have a gaming district on this server. I've never ever talked about it, but it totally exists. And a lot of stuff has actually been built over there recently. So in the last episode, we were working at the raid farm quite a bit. And I asked you guys what we should do with all of these totems of undying. We have way more than this way uh, back at the raid farm as well. We just have seriously way too many of these things. They are too valuable to throw away however they are less valuable than shulker boxes and as you can see i've kind of dedicated like a significant amount of my supply of shulker boxes so we need an excellent way to either sell these in mass or just completely waste them on fun stupid mini games and all of you guys have suggested that we either throw them into lava which is a thing that i'm not about to do still too valuable to throw in lava or you guys suggested that we build some mini games where we use as many totems of undying as quick as we possibly can. So that is what we're going to be building up today in the gaming district. Real quick, before we get to actually going to the gaming district, we have done a couple things in between episodes on live streams. We live stream quite a bit. And the current project that I've been attempting to do is getting some shulkers from the end dimension over here to the overworld. It sounds simple enough, but oh no, no, no. It is not a simple task at all on this platform. Uh, so if you want to see all of the derps and all the shenanigans of that entire deal over the course of three live streams, uh, all of that content is on the second channel. And by the way, we have a second channel. It's called Silent 2 or Silent Well or whatever. I don't know. But you should like definitely subscribe to that as well. It's about to reach 7,000 subscribers. So that's a cool thing. And yeah, just wanted to let you know that there is a lot of very, very derpy, uh, you know, shulker related content on that channel. If you're interested, go check it out. Might be a good way to burn a couple hours. We also raided a couple of end cities while we were out there in the end. So of course we have just too much iron gear and we also got all of this iron gear as well. All of that diamond gear. And honestly, we just have like a lot of gear. I should probably start selling that. So to give you some idea of where the gaming district actually is, that is our portal right here in the actual purple nether tunnel. If we fly this way, then we'll actually be in the new truly bedrock nether hub and then if we go down the red tunnel a little bit then we'll actually be at the gaming district portal as you can see we have an amazing nether tunnel going there it definitely doesn't look nearly good enough so there we go now it's definitely looking amazing uh but this tunnel uh you know it, it goes to this portal right here and then this actually does go to the gaming district so this nether portal brings you out right here next to the complimentary creeper hole and this is just a pretty massive desert to be honest there is a lot of area to build with around here if the render distance was a little bit higher on realms you'd really be able to see like what's going on but yeah this is a pretty massive area and we can build anywhere in this entire area so there's already a couple of builds going on there is that thing right there which i have no idea what is there is this thing Thing right here which I believe is zaps like uh, temple run minigame yeah that's that's the temple run that's cool we'll, we'll play that sometime and then there's also a couple other builds we have blue jay over here making a hero landing game so you have to drop onto like a one by one water source and depending on the difficulty of the source that you hit you win a bigger reward or you just completely die if you miss the water source and then we also got this thing right here. Not sure what this is for, but it looks like a pallet and an area to build a place. So what we need to determine is where we want to build our minigame and how exactly we're going to build it as well. So our minigame is likely going to be about 30 by 30 or so. I would think so. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing here, but we're going to figure it out as we go. Uh, but anyway, this is kind of a like nice a little flat area. It's not directly in front of the portal. So if we build a complete eyesore, that's not going to be an issue. And overall, I just think this will be a pretty decent area to build our minigame. So let me go ahead and grab a bunch of resources, try and figure out what I'm doing, and then we can start building the foundations of what is going to be our kind of like a death run thing. 
And also, I need I need to figure out a better name for that because that is just terrible. <laughs> so I've done some thinking about how exactly this is going to work and I've also put down some markers over here in the world. So let me explain what I am thinking. As you can see, we have a kind of like four different main rooms in those four sections of this main square. And each one of these rooms is gonna have a variety of different ways to die. It's not just gonna be like one set way or one path. This there's gonna be quite a bit of replayability to this and the goal of the game is to use nine totems of undying in the shortest amount of time possible and while you're using those totems you also have to escape this little like mini parkour ish maze to actually get through all four of these rooms and then reach the exit that is gonna be right over here. So you'll start in the center and then do a little bit of a spiral going out. And while you're doing that spiral, you gotta use up all nine of your totems. And then whoever can complete that task in the shortest amount of time is of course going to be basically the winner. So all four of these rooms are likely gonna have, you know, a different theme or ways of taking damage. And then when it comes to actually dying, a good rule would probably be like die in nine different ways. That way you can't just farm like one really efficient way of dying. Uh, so the task at hand right now is to kind of pretty up this area, figure out what those four different themes are going to be and then actually start building this thing. So there we go, a little while later, I have cleaned up the build. I got some of the foundations and some of the pillars in place as well. And overall, I think it's looking pretty proper, which is nice. Now we all know it's not going to turn out pretty proper, which is exactly why I hit it with uh, this wonderful mountain range here. So nobody needs to look at my disgusting build. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up and mention real quick, however, is that yes, Exumavoid has built a similar game on the Hermitcraft server, and that one is pretty fun as well. However, that one is much more on rails. There's like five different predetermined ways for you to die, and you have to go about doing that as fast as you can. Uh, this one is going to be a lot more open-ended and hopefully have a lot more replayability and hopefully a little bit of strategy to it as well, because each room and each section of you know mechanics is going to have many many different ways to take damage and many different ways to die so i don't know it'll be an interesting game and hopefully it'll take a little while to play as well since you need to you know die nine times but yeah we'll see how it turns out i think we're going to use sandstone for the walls definitely not and this method though because that looks kind of terrible like i said not going to be a proper build it's going to be hidden by a mountain for a reason uh but yes i just wanted to bring up the exuma void uh mini game as well because people do like to call out stuff with like that which is a good thing so i thought i would go ahead and mention it because they are pretty similar i did go ahead and round up a whole bunch of different things for use in this mini game as you can see a bunch of lava and fire ice and water and you know a bunch of different cacti map blocks, soul sand, and just a whole bunch of random different things that I think we'll maybe use. Not entirely sure, we will see. There's always gonna be room for improvement with this type of game as it's kind of open-ended. Uh, but I also decided on the four different types of, you know, rooms that we're gonna be having. We're gonna have a water level, of course, because, you know, every good game has to have a water level. That's just kind of mandatory game development right there. We're gonna have a redstone based level as well, where there's many different redstone contraptions for dealing damage to and killing the player as well. And then we're also going to have kind of like a parkour fiery level. That'll be interesting. And finally, we're gonna have like a random deaths level where there's just many different ways to die. And hopefully, all of that combines into one fairly playable and hopefully interesting minigame. All right, so a while later now, I've just been kind of having fun with the first room, which is parkour and fire. So it might not look like much, but a lot of thought has actually gone into this. There is many, many different ways to take damage in here. So for example, as soon as you come in here, you got like the magma pit, you can catch yourself on fire. And kind of the idea behind this one is to kind of like stack damages as much as you can. So you would want to, for instance, be caught on fire, then also take some damage from the cactus if you can. And then there's a lot of different places to actually parkour to. So you can jump up here, you can hop on top the cactus and then 
maybe hop back because he failed the jump. Uh, but basically, like, if you jump from up here, it takes a minute to get up here, but that's the furthest drop in this place. So you can take a bit of damage from that. If you're good enough at parkouring, you can actually end up in this lava source, which of, of course is a very quick way for you to actually die. And I'm doing very bad at actually demonstrating this on camera, aren't I? But yeah, you can hop in there, use a totem, and then from here you can actually parkour to the exit of this place, or you can go the more standard route which is that one straight across. So yeah, you got fire, magma blocks, cactus, fall damage, and lava all in one room. And of course you don't need to die at all in here if you don't want to, you can simply just parkour straight across and out and into the next room if you want to. But ideally you would want to get to that lava and then also maybe die from the fall damage a couple times, use up several totems in this room. So one thing that's gonna make this room fairly difficult actually is that totems of undying give you fire resistance when you use one. So let's get ourselves caught on fire real quick. We're going to try and jump off of this place to take as much damage as we can. We're nearly dead. Let's jump off of there again. And we're nearly gonna die from that totem. There we go. So now if we open up this thing, we have fire resistance for 34, 35, you know, seconds. Quite a while. So you have to ideally go for that lava source first. And then after that, you can get yourself, uh, you know, the other deaths in this room. So once you use your first totem, that is pretty much it. That removes a lot of the damage sources from this room, and you need to strategize and decide how exactly you're going, going to die first, and then strategize how you're going to die after that as well. So there is quite a bit of thought process that goes into this. But yeah, so you have to really strategize how exactly you want to go about defeating this room or even if you want to defeat this room because you could just completely bypass it and go just, you know, to the other rooms. Do whatever you want. Oh yeah, I decided to use the cut sandstone for this build because I think cut sandstone actually looks pretty decent. It does remind me of Mumbo's season four base, however. I'm pretty sure he used the red terracotta and the cut sandstone. Uh, maybe it was a slightly different combination, but this reminds me very much of his base, that cool base from Season 4. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I think I'm building with this correctly. I don't know, I, I don't really build with sandstone, and this is my first time ever really using sandstone, so I might be doing this incorrectly. <laughs> so I've done a little bit more refining and some play testing as well, and I figured out how to make this back corner actually useful. If you come back here, you can jump on top of this cactus, which, is, which has a string on it to stop it growing, and then you can also get into the lava that way, and also escape this room that way as well. So those members that are clever enough to see that as a useful option can of course use that to their advantage. That's something I always like doing in random like open world games like Skyrim is just jumping places that you shouldn't be. It's fun. You guys ever do that in games? Or like Fallout or something where you just like get where you shouldn't necessarily be just by persistently jumping I've, 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 I've had too much time to think while building this, okay? Jeez, leave me alone. <laughs> as much as I love being on fire, I think that this room is more or less done for the time being. Of course, I need to go ahead and like fill in the walls and do all the other good stuff, but yeah, I think this room is pretty good. I'll have to have some play testers come by so we can refine it, uh, but otherwise, I'd like to move on to the next room. So for this one, I think I'm gonna do the random deaths level. What do I mean? mean by random deaths? I have absolutely no idea. Let me figure it out so I can actually tell you guys. <laughs> so I wanted to put a couple of puffer fish into this next one and the only like a coral reef that I know of is one that I completely destroyed a couple of months ago. So I had to go fly around for a little while try and find this place but luckily there are a few actual puffer fishes here. I'm gonna grab just all of these guys. You never know when you could use a puffer fish, right? There's another one over there. Why are you puffed up? I have no idea, but get into the bucket. Thank you. So yeah, I completely destroyed this coral reef. As you can see, not a single piece of coral here, and I kind of regret nothing because it was kind of a pitiful reef. So the pufferfish has been installed, and I will say the random deaths room does look a little bit plain. 
However, there's actually many, many ways to die in here. So I guess let's just kind of go through it real quick. We have, of course, the cactuses. Uh, these lava sources are just kind of temporary because I'm out of buckets. That is supposed to have a block in it. And then if you go ahead and you actually parkour up this thing and press the button, you can get shot by either a slowness arrow, which will kind of hurt your cause and literally hurt you. Or you can get a normal arrow. You can also get some rotten flesh to eat, possibly starve to death. Or you can get a puffer fish, which is definitely going to mess you up. That is the one that you want. So, of course, if you press that, you fall off here, you get shot, dealt a little bit of damage. Uh, but you can kind of also parkour over to this guy and then fall down to this hole, probably die from that fall, depending on how much health you have. And then, of course, you could try and drown in the bubble column. Moving over from that, we have the sweet berries and the cactuses. Rub up against both of those guys, have a very fun time. You can also try drowning in the water, dying on the magma block. This is basically just like the epicenter of hurt right here. And then we also have a pufferfish over here. So if they notice that guy, even more death and destruction. And other than that, that is about as many random deaths as I could really think of. Of course, if you have any suggestions for any part of this minigame, let me know if a comment down below. I'd love to include some extremely evil and also kind of clever things in here as well. So another thing that you can do is actually when you come from this room, you can jump on top of the cactus. Of course, the top of the cactus doesn't deal any damage because bug rock. And then from there, you can jump over to here and then basically immediately die as soon as you're in this room uh, so that's pretty decent and also you can kind of jump from here back up to there if you want to get back to that room for some reason and that's pretty much all there is to it actually you know what speaking of that we should probably put like a slab right there so you can't jump back in you know make it so that's kind of a one-way street so this room does still look a little bit empty but there's honestly not too much you can really add to it without like breaking this thing right here if we put like even stones or a little bit of parkour thing then you can just kind of like get onto that super easily and get to the easy death in this room i want to make like the super easy quick deaths take a little bit of time to actually get to take a little bit of effort you know uh, that way it's kind of, uh, you know, risk versus reward. You could waste a lot of time, but then again, you could have a very quick death. So there is that. Uh, so otherwise, I think that this room is pretty much done and good to go. We're not going to have time to do the water room today or have time to do the redstone room today. But those are going to be very fun little projects. We can actually have like a really, really big water room because that's going to be a very three dimensional space. So that is going to be a very fun time. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that in the next couple of episodes. Again, if you have any suggestions for things that we should add, improvements that we should make, details to do, or just like general ideas for this minigame, then of course let me know with a comment down below. And thank you all so much for suggesting a minigame. This is my first time ever building a minigame, so I hope that it actually turns out pretty well. And hopefully people enjoy playing it too. And you know what? It doesn't even look like that much of an eyesore from up here. So that is a total win. Uh, but that is going to do it for this episode today. I do hope that you guys have enjoyed. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this episode, then of course be sure to leave a like on the video as it helps out the video and the channel significantly. If you're new here and you want to stay tuned in the series and see the next episode, be sure to subscribe and of course turn on the notifications and everything. Do the thing press the buttons but i will see you all down in the comment section and in the next one again thank you so much for watching and then there was silence